Hi everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I've got a holiday card project featuring some very simple images and some very simple coloring. I think sometimes if you struggle with coloring, and I put myself into that category, limiting your colors and going simple can give you a great chance for success. So let's take a look at the products. Today I'm featuring a new stamp set I designed for Simon Says Stamp called Clean Line Christmas. Very minimal topography and trees. I've also got a few inks here that I'll be using today. Some Memento Tuxedo Black for Copic coloring and a little embossing ink. Also, I've got some silver powder here from Brutus Monroe and Sterling. I've got one Distress Ink Cube that I'll be using to create a background in my blender brush. I actually have a little sticker on there just to remind me the blue brush goes with the blue inks. Thank you, I'm really smart that way. I've got a Jelly Roll pen and I'm also going to be using these stitched hillside borders. I've had these for a while. I love them for holiday cards. And I'll be using a lot of white cardstock, the Nina Solar White. And um, the cookbook markers will all be listed below. Let's jump into the project. So my background is going to be created using one ink. That is my idea of limiting a color palette. I picked Salty Ocean. It's a great color, looks great for holiday skies, and all I'm doing is laying it down on my cardstock, trying to have it be a little darker at the top and fading into white at the bottom. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of this fluid ink. It's a white acrylic ink. I'm gonna put some on a little block, get a wet paintbrush, and I'm just gonna flick and I'll flick some snowflakes onto my background. Just kind of have it be random and willy-nilly, and I thought this looked really cute, so flicking away, and then I will let that dry. Next, I'll start stamping my trees, and I'm gonna use my Misty Stamp Positioner tool today, making sure that everything is lined up and you can hit it more than once. Now, these are really delicate trees, and I'm stamping today with Memento Tuxedo Black ink because it is a Copic-friendly ink but I wanted them to be just a tiny bit darker, so the beauty of the stamp positioner, you can stamp right over the same area and you get a perfect impression. I went ahead and stamped some extra trees on the bottom because the rule of coloring, always have backup, always have backup. And now for the coloring. And here is where limiting your colors can be really helpful. Again, I am not a very accomplished colorer of Copics. I love the look. I love the way alcohol markers go down on the paper because they don't pill your paper. So if you've ever been coloring with like a water-based marker and it gets kind of nubby and starts to peel up the paper, that's why alcohol ink does not do that. But I'm also intimidated by my markers. So when I stick with a monochromatic scheme, I have three blues here, nothing fancy, and just lay down a little bit try to add whatever shading feels appropriate to my eye, I tend to have more success. So I thought these three blues worked pretty well together and I've got this quite speeded up because I work pretty slowly. Uh, my, my other goal, <laughs> stay inside the lines. So I feel pretty successful right now because this all worked out pretty well. Hit the next tree, going lighter color in the whole tree, putting in the mid-tone, in sort of the center from the bottom up and then adding that darker tone. That's it. Went over here. I decided to leave the little uh, circles on the tree open because I thought it would look nice and crisp and white against the white cardstock. But there you go. Three trees, three colors, really simple. For the stars, again, keeping it simple. Two colors. I think this is Y32 and Y35. Laying down the lighter color and then coming in with the darker color to add just a tiny bit of shading to my stars. And then I will repeat that and finish that off camera for the remaining stars. Now there are coordinating dies available for this set and I will have those linked below, but I did not have them at the time I made this card because they had not arrived in the office. So I figured I can do this. I can fussy cut because I have, I have a whole new level of confidence with cutting out images, but these are pretty easy. I used my big scissors because I just wanted to make clean, fast, straight cuts. Went ahead and cut those trees. That looks pretty good. Next, I cut out my stars, and the tip here, of course, is turn your paper, not your scissors. And so it took me a little while to get them all cut out, especially when I got down to the tiniest one, which I ended up not using. I ended up just getting a second mid-sized star, but it turned out pretty good. 
My panel with the snow is dry, so I'm going to cut it out with one of my A2 layers dies from Waffle Flower, panel number one. And then I'm going to repeat this on a piece of white cardstock with the same sized die because now I'm going to cut out my snow hills. So I want to make sure that there's enough room for my sentiment and I'm going to run that through and cut out hill number one. And then I'm going to flip that other piece of cardstock, line up the other hill, and then figure out the second hill's angle. I just used the same die for both hills. I thought this worked just fine. I'm going to run that through now and I have my hills. And the great thing is, because I used that die to cut out the paper, they are all perfectly sized. Next, I will take that lower hill and stamp my greeting, which is aptly season's greetings. I'm going to ink that up with some embossing ink. I also treated the area with my powder tool. For some reason, I did not. Uh, you don't see that on camera, but it's important so that the powder only sticks to where you stamped your sentiment. This powder is a fantastic silver if you're looking for a goodie. I love this powder. Got my heat tool nice and hot and I will quickly bring it to the paper and melt the powder until it is smooth and shiny. See that shine? I love silver powder. I'm going to use some dot runner and I'm going to add this to the card base. Now this is a little tip, pro tip. You can use a score buddy, press everything into the corner and quickly line up your elements. I'm going to repeat that for the other panel. I've popped this up with some foam tape. I want to have a little dimension on here, plus the tape helps to keep it flattened if it gets warped in the process of heat embossing. And again, using the corner, lining that up, pressing it down. Mm, it's magic, just like that, all lined up. I'm going to score a card base. This is going to be a USA2, which is four and a quarter wide by five and a half tall. I always tape my card bases closed just because the cardstock is so heavy and thick. I like it to stay flat while I am adding all of my elements. I'm going to use a little dot runner and just put this card panel directly onto the card base. Get that lined up. See that nice framing margin space of white? Oh, I love that. I just love how it frames out the card. Getting that down, and now it's time to just arrange my trees. This took me a while. I did a lot of playing off camera, but I settled on this design. I'm trying to create a little dimension. I mean, I'm not really, you know, you know that they're not different sized trees. They're all the same, but I wanted one tucked in the back and one kind of tucked into the left there. And then I wanted everything to have a little bit of overlapping. I actually took an extra piece of cardstock here and glued it down for that tree on the left. Sometimes to get the dimension just right, you gotta, you gotta do crazy things. And so, popped up all the stars on a little bit of thin foam adhesive. And that's, that's my finished card project. Well, not quite finished, because I thought, let's add a little fun. Busted out my Wink of Stella pen just to put a little bit of shine onto the stars. I always forget that I have this pen, and it's a really fun pen. Adds that nice little bit of shimmer, and you can kind of see it catching in the light there. Kind of hard to see on camera, but. And then I got my Jelly Roll pen and decided to add a few more snowflakes, because I felt like, you know, we need, it's a simple card. Let's layer in some more snow. And the Jelly Roll pens are great for that, really great pen. But I also decided to make a tag. And this tag is based on the same design. It's a little more uh, simplified, I guess. I added a silver tree trunk. You can see that out of some glitter cardstock. And then I actually decided to take a little Nouveau crystal glaze and fill in the star. I actually thought that looked pretty good. I might do that on the other card, but I might not. Thanks so much for watching today, and if you're not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you. And if you do subscribe, be sure to hit the gray bell below the video so you get notified every time I post a new clip.